to take it down to the floor right now. We need to hear from I if the players had anything to say before we get started. Thank you, Rich. I spoke with Gingy of Method EU this morning, and this is definitely a guy that does not skip leg day at the gym. And he said, just like his fitness regime, his practice regime is all about consistency and trying to get every move you make perfect and just doing it every single day consistently as much as they can. So this is definitely a team we want to look out for. To do, but I, I want to jump back to Gingy for a second. I actually bumped into him uh, before the, the show was even getting started, before the opening ceremony. And one of the big things that he had to say was just, although they find themselves in this matchup, the, the real thing that he thinks they have going for them is the fact that they get to be up on the stage so much. Opposition coming out day in and day out of our Western teams in particular. Also important to note, we got our double of roots coming up here. It's ironic, making sure we're taking advantage of those spotters, as you mentioned not want to be here. This definitely was not the positioning that they were hoping for, and they're looking to be able to get out of that spot as quickly as they can. And of course, there it goes. The final gripping terror is down. That They'll get access to that final cannon in a, in a couple seconds here. These slams are pushing people back, but as long as they're able to hop in the cannon, they'll be totally fine. The cannon's available. Genji's inside. The final shot goes off, and Method EU takes game. And in style as well. Jack said it himself. This is not something you typically expect to see in a lower matchup, but we have two of the best teams right now in the entire world facing off. It's Blizzard. Coming in at this point, love seeing that the double DKs on both sides. A big fan of Miss Weaver on this one as well. Surprised that he's not going. I mean, it's interesting to see a difference in the terms of healers. Usually when we see somebody not swap to the new sort of comp healer, which is that, like you mentioned, Miss Weaver month here, it's usually a matter of either having something special planned with the Druid, or maybe it's just a comfort pick. So I'm interested to see if playing the Druid enables anything here for them. Yeah, you'd love to see it. And hopefully they're going to be able to bring in that other round of blobs. And Mears does go down. It looks like he's even out of range of fragments. So I'm not sure if he's actually off the cliff or not. That, that's completely uncanny. I mean, that's I'm not seeing a battle res going up. There's no battle res coming out. So, I mean, there's a question that you have to ask here. It's a tyrannical boss. Aquaster's at 80%. Do you want to format the rest of the boss, or do you want to reset and start again? And it looks like they're going to reset the boss. So they're going to have to deal with the rest of the trash. But uh, Fractans no. also goes down. This is another problem. It's a raging dungeon with everything so low and not having all of your DPS available. You can't deal with this trash with your holy case. They just have a full round of Shadow Mels go out to be able to try to drop the red from those bosses. Looks like it. Yeah, it looks like it at that point. But you are seeing now just about to go down. Everybody is dying. Method EU having their wipe. Oh, this because this is by definitely the impossible. They're pulling all of the remaining trash into the boss. They're going to be cleaving it down with the DKs. Zalia did end up rocking his staff there. But we have Igloo down again for, for Games Revolted. And they don't have a res available. They just got to kill this boss onto this one. They're trying to be able to get that Forgotten Denizen back in. But two cast have gone off. Because again, it's in that Void Puddle. Like I mentioned, they need to be able to get a ranged kick onto it. DKs have a little bit wider range than the other ones do. Look at that video. Manifestations, 5% onto Volzin. Oh, he just looked away. It was at 70 onto this one. They are destroying this boss. Man. Bring it down. But there's still a big death differential on this one. So Games Revolt still has 25 seconds on the board of that death differential to take care of rest, the rest of the trash. If they're able to kill these two trash mobs within that timer, they still take this dungeon. But they have so much, so much HP left to deal with. I don't think it's going to happen. Be so tough for them, and Method EU is just so well prepared to be able to capitalize on any of the mistakes that Games Revolted had. Those three deaths out the boss fight, it's just a nightmare, and Method EU! Not much to say to that, but welcome to BlizzCon, ladies and gentlemen. What a series that ends up being from start to finish. I think this is one of those scenarios that we go back to, though. Do you think they have to take a risk like that if, if they're hoping to, to win? Jump down to the main stage, I think we get to talk to Jinji. Hey everyone, I am here with Gingy of Method EU. Now, you guys have been telling me that you've been practicing quite a lot this week, and now you've just won the first match of the day. How does that feel? Uh, well, it obviously feels good, but I'm not really happy with our performance. The first game was like average, and the second game we had a slight miss up on the first boss, so we need to shave up if we want to win the whole tourney. This one titles for a dungeon that is incredibly on the rails. It seems like you're having to pull the same 80-ish percent trash, maybe the last, you know, 20, 10%, something like that is going to be a little bit different. I'm very excited to see what two weeks of practice with no streaming and no broadcasting of it is going to bring us. Yeah, whenever you actually are on the stage, it's some of the best feelings possible. And overall, this Method EU, this Method EU run was very, very smooth. Absolutely dominant as they do take down King Dazar and do seal game number one. He's rest.
Caster saying, yeah, I guess the run was a little bit too smooth. Just <laughs> a little bit too fast. Even better for this one. Yeah, we got we got to see something that is Guy Fieri level pathing. They need to take him to flavor town. They need something spicy to Drop a little bit, 10% threshold field the profit, but you really want to get it up on the boss right now. Harlan Sweet about to die. They need as much damage as they can get. All the trash is taken care of. Harlan Sweet is about to die, and I don't quite think my warrior never to be able to do it in five seconds right now. Yeah, so that was a big 2-0 uh, from FDU. But not to discredit Buff War, that was a very close match. I, I think that's just one of those things. When you look at what far here at BlizzCon, but they're going up against one of the toughest teams. Now cracking that top three. It's a little bit too slow on Harlan and uh, Method EU. They look fantastic in the lower bracket. They definitely do. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to be pretty excited to answer some of those questions about playing at LAN. Able to get the redemption he so rightly loves and so so Riley wants to see here. Abracadabra Method EU both engaging in with the council right now. They kind of stop DPS really quick so they wouldn't be getting hit by any of the spell reflects. But look at this room just filling up with Sanguine. It's causing the Rune Carver to still stay alive. The edge cast. Usually you don't want it to get it at all, but Method EU on this side just having a full wipe as they entered the Hunter's room. And they're not going to be able to sustain this one. Jinji getting frozen, now about to go down, and Abrakidabra, the door is now open for them. I'm, I'm so impressed with Method EU right now. Like, they've just been playing so clean in the second half of this time. Their ability to shake off mistakes, their ability to get past any of this diversity has been such an amazing thing to watch. They did it on Shrine. They're about to do it again. Frag does go down. They need to get that battle res up quickly to seal the deal. 5% a lot of AOE damage. I just don't see how it's possible. They're going to spend half of that 35 seconds. And Divine Field misses up. jump. Divine Field misses jump. He can't go upstairs as quickly. He's got to run all the way around. He's just sitting there walking regular speed. And that is going to be it. Abra Kidabra, they got 20 seconds left to be able to try to grab all these mobs in together. And you're right, they do have to pull into the Hunter's Lodge. I don't think there's any way they're going to be able to take it. What? You brought up one thing that we really need to hit one more time. And it is the stuff that makes for a winning team in an environment like this. Answer right now, before we get this one started, BlizzCon, let me hear you make some noise for two of the top dogs. Gotta watch out for now, he's dropping very low. They get the Dispel off onto him. Zalia was casting Trank. There's double demolishing onto now. They even put the Crucible of Flame into him to add a little bit of extra love. And Vitkov is about to fall. There we go, second shot's the charm. Method EU taking the 2-0 victory over Abrakidabra. Any words to say to them? Just hoping for a, for a good series. A lot of wipes, a lot of memes. All right, now let's hear it once more again, you guys. Method EU, give them your energy. I don't believe there's any team out there that is uh, better than the current one we have right now. I feel like the team that we have right now is just so good both individually and also as a team. Everyone brings something to the team and uh, wouldn't replace anyone. The map game number one between Method EU and Method NA. Both going into the left side here, approaching Alunza's room, and we've seen this time and time again, Zyronic. Some big pulls and some big action on this one. And it's all about the defensives getting used, but the Dwipe is coming up for Method EU as the last vestiges of the team are getting taken down. Whereas on the side of Method NA, they totally pulled it off just fine, no deaths. They, they even have time left on their bloodlust for the next pull. Bad Grievous is stacking up to full. This is full emergency mode for JB right now. They need to be able to stay alive. Priest of Loons at 3%, but Nerf goes down. Nerf does go down, Lighty goes down. They get the battle res up. They need to taunt Alunza and get her under control. Two more mobs still left under the boss. Another death on the side for Shaqib. And this Ataldazar is getting bloody. And, uh, the, oh, the She's the gonna heal! Ceiling. She's gonna to heal, Avlunza does survive. Nerf goes down, Method EU back in the driver's seat. Together and making sure the kicks are have kicks are everything that we need. And I love the control out of both of these unholy DKs. You have the grips, you have a longer range on your kick, and you even have the pet kick as well that you can start taking advantage of if you really needed it on top. And Method EU, despite that early wipe, 
just like the wipes that we've seen in two other series beforehand. They're able to shake it off and they're able to bounce back. And I mean, Method to you, the second this boss and this guy is going to go down, are going to be taking game one of the series. There's absolutely nothing that could possibly go wrong. Oh no. <laughs> the Zyronic curse onto that one. 3% left onto Yasma. The Sky Screamer has gone down and so has Yasma. Game number one going to Method EU. Shinji letting out a roar there. Been able to take them down in this tournament and actually knock them down to this lower side of the bracket. You have to keep that in mind and pull down the first championship out of BlizzCon. Let's dive right in, Zyronic. Deathbringer in the back. Once it's in the group, they'll be fine. But man, that, that took them a long time to get dealt with. It looks like Whoa, Nerf stun goes up on the tank. Nerf is stunned right now. He's not able to recover. Lighty goes down, and we're going to be having a full team wipe coming up on the side of Method NA. Everyone like Butter, there's nothing between them in the end of the dungeon. With Bullseth going down, Method EU is going to be up 2-0 in this series. Right, the last percent goes down. Method EU silently taking that shrine of the storm. Going up in the series 2-0. Team in Method NA. That's gotta be the one. And right now, we're already seeing the differences. We're seeing Mistweaver and Arrested Druid coming up onto this one. Both teams dropping their shrouds and moving into this more industrial wing. For them, and we're gonna see how close Method EU will, EU will be to follow. At this point, Method EU is much quicker, and it's 14% left onto the boss. I don't think Method NA is gonna be able to pull out this one. And Method EU will take the series three to zero and will be our BlizzCon champions. They hoist up that trophy right now. I don't think that there is a question in anybody's mind that this is the best team in the world! And every single glimpse that we have into the mindset of this team shows nothing but the mindset of champions. Congratulations, you are 2019 Mythic Dungeon International Champions. How do you feel right now? I feel okay. I feel really, really good, and I'm proud of my team, and uh, I mean, it was a long day. We went from a loser bracket, and we just won every map from there, so I couldn't be happier. Now, every time I talk to you guys, you seem to have a super good attitude. How has staying positive throughout this year helped you succeed today? Like, mindset is one of the most important things when it comes to these games, and uh, staying positive, even when shit goes wrong, is super important. Like, even here in the final, we did mess up, like, really bad in the first at all and we were just like you know okay just take it from here just play our game see what happens and we end up winning anyway so it's just all mindset